Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the commanding officer of Officer Training Command Newport, welcome to the graduation ceremony for Officer Candidate School, Class 1-5, TAC 2-3. Over the past 13 weeks, the class team has been responsible for developing today's graduates to serve as professional naval officers worthy of special trust and confidence. The Class 1-5, TAC 2-3 class team includes class officers, Lieutenant Steinke, Lieutenant Maddox, and Lieutenant Billups. Class Recruit Division Commanders, Chief Petty Officer Davis, and Chief Petty Officer Cruz. Class Drill Instructor, Gunnery Sergeant Guerrero. Guests are encouraged to take photographs from the seating area at any time during the ceremony, except during the playing of the national anthem. The order of events for today's ceremony are as follows. At 1000, Rear Admiral Garvin, President, Naval War College, will arrive. The guests and class will rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and the invocation. The director and guest of honor will then ad address the graduating class and administer the oath of office. The graduates will then be recognized through the presentation of their commission by the director and the guest of honor. The guests will rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and the invocation. Naval War College, arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Everts will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Eternal Father, strong to save, we give you our thanks for binding the restless waves within each of these newly trained naval officers so they could stand proud this day for becoming morally, mentally, and physically developed for the service of our fleet. As they prepare for their next evolution in their communities, Remind them of what it means to be a leader and to serve with a purpose. Let them embody humility and selflessness. Remind them to value every sailor and civilian they cross paths with each day. Impress upon them the initiative, integrity, accountability, and toughness needed to do the right thing, especially when it's difficult. And embolden them to have ownership of what they are called to do, even when they are called into harm's way. So as these officers look to the horizon, 
prepare them for the challenge that lies ahead, giving them the physical, mental, and spiritual readiness to meet each one with confidence. And as we continue to celebrate this moment, we ask for your spirit to reside with us and all those who stand to watch this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Adam Walski, Director, Officer Candidate School. Good morning and welcome to all as we commission these officers. I want to give a special thank you to the family and friends in attendance, along with Admiral Garvin, General Adobo, Captain Burke, Captain Merriman, distinguished guests, and the Officer Training Command family for being here to welcome and congratulate the Navy's newest officers on the exciting journey they're about to begin. To the family of these 43 soon-to-be commissioned ensigns, first I want to sincerely thank you for the love, the support, and all you've done to build and prepare each of them into being the leaders the Navy needs. No single individual can do this on their own. And also I want to welcome you to the Navy family. To the graduates here today, as the Director of Officer Candidate School, I want to thank you for volunteering to serve our great nation. I am proud to welcome you all into the wardroom as ensigns. Your path to get here today from the unique motivations and the route to arrive at Officer Candidate School, completing rigorous military, academic, and physical training, overcoming obstacles, and seizing the opportunity afforded to you to start this journey. You proved yourself each step of the way, not just to us, but to yourselves as well. To learn, to grow, to lead. Take pride in this accomplishment and seize the next opportunity that awaits you, leading our sailors. In the years ahead, your knowledge, leadership skills, and morals will be tested. Let accountability to the sailors you will be standing watch with and accountability to yourself be your guide. And know that your service will make a positive impact to this world. Work hard. We need the best from you. The highest standards of personal and professional conduct, excellence in leadership, and a strict adherence to the Navy's core values of honor, courage, and commitment. Now it is my honor and privilege to introduce our guest of honor today. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the 58th President of the United States Naval War College and P3 Aviator, Rear Admiral Peter A. Garvin. Well, good morning. Good morning sir. That's right, outstanding. And thank you for the very kind and mercifully short introduction. Uh, those that would say that they want their bio read, um, it just shows you've been in the Navy a really long time. It is a fine Navy day despite the weather. In fact, I would say sometimes in, when the weather is like this, those are the best Navy days. So I'll add my welcome to all the family, friends, and loved ones here today to celebrate the commissioning of 43 new Naval officers. I know you are all beaming with pride, and rightfully so. And I am absolutely thrilled and honored to share this occasion with you all. All right, if I could audible real quick, all the new ensigns, relax, because I want you to listen, okay? All right, it's probably the first time you've been told to relax in a while, so enjoy it. So these fine young men and women, the support that you've given them is a solid foundation so that they may per persevere through many long days and challenges ahead. Our families, our friends, our shipmates are with us every step of the way. They serve with us 
and demonstrate their incredible resilience every single day. I have a thought on this, and I'd like you all to consider. Families are both the reason we serve and the reason we are able to serve. So thank you sincerely for being part of this Navy family. And how about a round of applause for all of the support network for these young men and women. You can applaud too. To the officer candidates of Class 1-5, TAC 2-3, congratulations on achieving your first milestone as a Naval officer. There undoubtedly will be more challenges and accomplishments in your future, but OCS rigorously tested your commitment, and each of you has proven that you were up to the task. I remember being in a very similar situation over 34 years ago. I still recall quite vividly the rush of emotions and thoughts that coursed through my mind that day. Pride at having achieved something others only dream of. The friendships formed in the crucible of trial under fire. The sobering thought of having to lead sailors potentially into harm's way. So many things must be going through your minds on this day, this day on which you've earned your commission. And you really are beginning this journey at an amazing time. As we lead into what many experts coined the phrase of the decade of consequence, realize that you all will be leading sailors as the world is at an inflection point, as the rules-based international order faces substantial challenges. I want you to consider the oath you are about to take, an oath not to a person or an office, or as much as I love it, not even to a flag, but to the Constitution and the ideas within it. If you haven't read it, read it recently, I'd recommend you do and read it very, very closely. Now, keeping this solemn oath will require innovation, determination, and cooperation with a vast network of partners, allies, and friends worldwide. But that's all at a very high level. Starting out as you go to your first command and begin to work on getting qualified, I'd like to give you three ideas to take with you. Lifelong learning, remember the fundamentals, and seize opportunities. First, lifelong learning. A growth mindset paves the path to success as a naval officer. Our world is constantly evolving, and in the dynamic realm of maritime operations, being a lifelong learner is not just an option, it is a necessity. Embrace the spirit of intellectual curiosity and never cease to explore new ideas, technologies, and strategies. Seek to understand the intricacies of our ever-changing global landscape, whether through further education, continuous professional development, or simply remaining open to new ideas and new perspectives. Remember that knowledge is an incredible, incredibly point, potent weapon in your arsenal and an invaluable asset as you face challenges. Now, your leadership must also evolve as you move forward. Take time to reflect and look back. As you advance, you'll need to refine your leadership even more closely. Like learning, leadership development is a never-ending journey, not a destination. Secretary Colin Powell said once, quote, leadership is solving problems. The day soldiers stop bringing their problems to, the day, to you is the day that you've stopped leading them. That leads me to my second point. Amidst the rapid pace of change, it is imperative to remember leadership fundamentals that have stood the test of time. The core values and principles that underpin our Navy's legacy, honor, courage, and commitment are your moral compass. Take care of your shipmates, take care of yourselves, take care of your family and friends, and understand the why behind what you are doing, and ensure those that you lead and those you serve alongside also understand the purpose. Do not lead by executive fiat. Third, seize opportunities when they arise. This profession will present many chances to make a difference, to lead, and to excel. Recognize that these opportunities may not always come at convenient times and might require you to step outside of your comfort zone. 
Now, I'm not a baseball player. I'm actually a soccer player. But the anecdote I'm going to give you really works best with baseball. And it goes like this. When it is your turn in the batter's box, you have many choices about what to do with that opportunity. But one thing is certain, you will depart that batter's box. You could stand there and wait for the perfect pitch. Perhaps you'll get a walk, but most likely a strikeout. In either case, not exactly hitting a home run for your team. Now the opposite is also problematic. If you swing at every pitch, you'll likely leave the batter's box quite quickly. And again, no chance of winning. So my advice, don't wait for the perfect pitch. Don't swing at every pitch, but step up and swing. So you're eager to get started and your families can't wait to congratulate you. So again, my congratulations on your achievement and welcome to the cadre of the finest naval officers in the world. Welcome to the wardroom. The three things I discussed will get you far. Lifelong learning, remember the fundamentals, and seize opportunities. And if you remember only one thing from this speech, it is this, step up and swing. Thank you. The graduating class will now receive the oath of office. Would all military personnel in uniform please come to the position of attention? Class, raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I state your name. Do solemnly swear, Do solemnly swear that, I'll support and defend that I'll support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the of the United States against, all enemies, against all enemies, foreign or domestic, foreign or domestic that I will bear true faith, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, that I will well and faithfully Discharge the duties of the office, the of the office. On, which on which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Welcome aboard, shipmates. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The distinguished graduates assembled will now be recognized by the director and the guest of honor for their achievements while undergoing train, training here at Officer Training Command, Newport. The Commander Jack Leavitt Leadership Award is presented to the ensign chosen by the class for the peer who most inspired them and personifies the highest standards of personal example, sound management practice, and moral responsibility. This award is being presented to Ensign Parker Anson Parker has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer and has been assigned to cryptological maritime warfare maritime activity in Fort Meade, Maryland. The Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce Academics Award is presented to the Ensign who achieved the highest academic average. This award is being presented to Ensign Nobel Ensign Nobel is also being presented with the Lieutenant Thomas Eady Honor Award for the Ensign who achieved the highest overall average in academics, military training, and physical fitness. Ensign Nobel has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to the Naval Flight School in Pensacola, Florida. The Chapel Clardy United States Marine Corps Physical Fitness Award is presented to the Ensign who achieved the highest overall grade in physical fitness. This award is being presented to Ensign Thomas. Ensign Thomas has been designated as a nuclear submarine officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Thomas is a distinguished Naval graduate.
We will now recognize the remaining graduates. Ensign Fernandez has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Dunkley has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LSD-42 USS Germantown, homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign Joyce has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer and has been assigned to cryptologic warfare activity 66 in Fort Meade, Maryland. Ensign Fleming has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG-113 USS John Finn, homeported in Yokosuka, Japan. Ensign Brainerd has been designated as a nuclear surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG-89 USS Mustin, homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign George has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to the Naval Flight School in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Manship has been designated as a nuclear surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG 84 USS Bulkley, home ported in Rota, Spain. Ensign Raman has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer and has been assigned to cyber defense activity in Fort Meade, Maryland. Ensign Burke has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG 105 USS Dewey, home ported in Yokosuka, Japan. Ensign Corliss has been designated as a nuclear submarine officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Cusack has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LSD-45 USS Comstock, home ported in San Diego, California. Ensign Evans has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LSD-42 USS Germantown, home ported in San Diego, California. Ensign Funk has been designated as a nuclear surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LSD-51 USS Oak Hill, home ported in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Hartman has been designated as an, as an engineering duty diving officer and has been assigned to Naval Diving and Salvage Training Center in Panama City, Florida. Ensign Hoffman has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to Naval Intelligence Officer Course in Dam Neck, Virginia. Ensign Jakeman has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to the Navy Flight School in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Krauss has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LPD-29 USS McCool, home ported in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Lalonde has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to Theater Undersea Surveillance Command Atlantic in Dam Neck, Virginia. Ensign Lewis has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer and has been assigned to Naval Intelligence Operations Command in Georgia, in Fort Jordan, Georgia. Ensign Lynch has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LCS Crew 209 USS Omaha, home ported in San Diego, California. Ensign McLean has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to the Naval Flight School in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign McLean is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Medina has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer and has been assigned to Naval Intelligence Operations Command Hawaii in Kunia, Hawaii. Ensign Menton has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LSD-49 USS Harper's Ferry, home ported in San Diego, California. Ensign Merriman has been designated as a nuclear submarine officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Merriman is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Moffitt has been designated as a cryptologic warfare officer and has been assigned to Naval Intelligence Operations Command Hawaii in Kunia, Hawaii. Ensign Wynn has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Obrowski has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LSD-48 USS Ashland, home ported in San Diego, California. Ensign Pham has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Pitcairn has been designated as a nuclear submarine officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Reed has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG-115 USS Rafael Peralta, home ported in Yokosuka, Japan. Ensign Reed is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Schneider has been designated as a nuclear submarine officer 
and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Shepardson has been designated as a Nuclear Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG-86 USS Shoot, homeported in Yokosuka, Japan. Ensign Smith has been designated as a Cryptologic Warfare Officer and has been assi assigned to Naval Intelligence Operations Command in Hawaii, in Kunia, Hawaii. Ensign Stahowski has been designated as a Nuclear Submarine Officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Stern has been designated as a Nuclear Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG-113 USS John Finn, home ported in Yokosuka, Japan. Ensign Streeter has been designated as a Public Affairs Officer and has been assigned to Navy Public Affairs Support Element East in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Valle de Gato has been designated as a Nuclear Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LSD-49 USS Harpers Ferry, home ported in San Diego, California. Ensign Vargas has been designated as a Supply Officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Juan has been designated as a Supply Officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Jones has been designated as a Public Affairs Officer and has been assigned to Navy Public Affairs Support Element West in San Diego, California. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing the United States Navy's newest ensigns. Please rise for the arrival of this for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal.